What a bullet! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently! And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end! Burnley win the next ball. It's Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Yes! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Fatella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. And he's on the outside, comes inside, comes up a shot. Oh, what a goal! Manuel Benson once more. That is top class. Burnley have done it. Fantastic. Clarence deserved the championship title. They've been the best side throughout the campaign. Burnley have won the second tier. What a fantastic achievement. The players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everybody and welcome along to the latest episode of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Redman, head of this weekend's game against Brighton at Turf Moor. A game where probably now as fans and players we will just start going through the motions for the rest of the season before the inevitable is confirmed. But there are still some people saying, look, if we beat Brighton and Sheffield United then who knows, but... Let's be honest, lads. It's looking grim. It's looking really grim. As you can see, as always, I am joined by an opposition fan. And this time, it is Joe from the Albion Obsessed podcast and YouTube channel. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, all good, mate. How are you? Yeah, really good, mate. I just wish the weather had buck up. I mean, I don't know what it's like all the way down on the south coast, but up here, it's absolutely atrocious. And it has been for about a week. Yeah, it's not much better here. Windy, rainy, cold still, and it's April. So, yeah, hopefully it picks up again and we can have something positive to look at. Because I, I think for, for both clubs, obviously, I know your guys is, is relegation and that's a lot bleaker than what we're experiencing. But I think there's a little bit of negative emotion around the Albion really? at the moment. So, um, going into this weekend's game, I think we're probably both <laughs> feeling like it's going to be a crap afternoon. But yeah. Well, it's all relative, isn't it? Obviously, like you said, we are staring down the barrel of going back to the Championship, which, at the end of the day, isn't the end of the world. We had fun there last year, but personally, I'd, I'd, I'd rather be in the Premier League. I know some people maybe defiant in the face of relegation will sit in there and say, ah, it's what, so much better, no VNR and all that, but we always want to dine at the top table. But before I get started, I just want to remind you all that this episode of Turfcast is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. You can make Green King your go-to destination for the season's final stretch because you can wash every televised Burnley game down with delicious food and refreshing beverages. And with 900 sports clubs dotted around the UK, the chances are you're within walking distance of your local Green King pub. And let's be honest, watching football is way better with friends and family. So get your squad together for every every televised Premier League fixture in an atmosphere worth sharing. That includes huge title showdowns, the race for European qualification and nail-biting relegation six-pointers. And don't forget to download the Green King Sport app to enjoy exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there's a game on. Right then, Joe, you kind of touched on it there briefly. Great name, by the way. Joe is a fantastic <laughs> name. Um, you touched on it there briefly, but there's a bit of negativity surrounding Albion so far. Um, mm. what's going on then? Because I'm just looking at your form. I actually thought you'd be higher than 10th in the league just because Brighton have been so good for so many years. I was surprised yeah. to see you in 10th. But, you know, it's, it's not to be sniffed at. A club the size of Brighton, you know, it's something we'd snap your hands off right now being 10th. But the form yeah. isn't great. It's better than ours, but it's not great. Um, obviously, lost last time out against Arsenal, probably expected. Mm -hmm. um, a draw against Brentford, though, and then a defeat against Liverpool. A victory against Forest, a, a damning defeat. Uh, at Fulham, actually. Um, a draw at home to Everton, um, ease past Sheffield United, and then a defeat to Tottenham. So in there, other than the Fulham result, probably a lot of it, and the Everton result, I suppose, uh, and potentially the Brentford, to be fair, uh, a lot of that is to be expected. The defeats anyway, apart from the Fulham results. But you mentioned there's some negativity um, around Brighton at the minute. Um, how, how come the fans are feeling negative? 
I, I think it's just a, again a feeling of uncertainty um, because there's a lot of links to R Roberto De Zerbi leaving the club this summer, um, yeah. and I think it's just a little bit of deja vu for us. Um, and we, I think we, we've only just gotten over the scars of, of Graham Potter leaving, and it was quite easy to do that because of obviously Roberto coming in and, and doing so yeah. well for us, achieving European football and getting into Europe for the first time. Um, I wouldn't say it's negativity surrounding the club. I, I would say it's just a, maybe like a, a come down from European football and being at such a high um, and then crashing out against Roma. Really disappointing um, first leg at their place, losing 4-0. Yeah. You think the way we played in the second leg, it, it, it didn't have to be that way. I think we could have managed that game a little bit better and, and had a chance at home. Um so, yeah, I think it's just a, a level of uncertainty about what's going to happen next for this club. Um, our owners have, have been quoted to say that they're, they're planning a very big summer um, and it's going to be a buyer's market as well. Um, we're set on £125 million profit, uh, yeah. which is a record for, for any English club, I, I believe. Um, and that doesn't even include the Moises Caicedo money. So I think concerning this season, I, th I think a lot of Brighton fans' minds are already in next season as to, to what we could achieve. And, and hopefully that's with De Zerbi by our side and, and at the helm because, yeah, I, I think that there couldn't be a better man to, to continue this project. But of course, you know, I, I'm biased. Of, of, of course, I want him to stay. Uh, but I know that's not the case. I, I know who, who Brighton are. I know where we're at. Um, yeah. But I, I know where we want to be as well. So hopefully De Zerbi can can think that as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll get on to sort of like the uncertainty surrounding the summer in a minute, but I do want to talk to you about your Premier League season and your season in general, really, because you mentioned it there, um, a decent Europa League run, but obviously did end in, in a, not disaster because it's Roma, but, you know, it was quite a big defeat out in Italy. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously 10th in the Premier League now, probably looking like you won't get Europe next season. I mean, you're not completely out of it. Uh, I think you're only... Four points off Newcastle. It's just loading now. Yeah, four points off Newcastle. I think eighth will get the Conference League, will it? I'm not sure how it all works this season. So, but yeah. Yeah, obviously because the fifth, that each place is going down a little bit with more in the Champions League. So you're not completely out of it, but it's looking unlikely. Below Chelsea now as well, who, who've had a, had a poor season and they do have a game in hand on you. Um, but your sort of like Premier League season so far, how would you, how would you rate the season? Premier League season, it's probably just been middle of the road, quite mediocre. I think our, our f form has suffered because of Europe. Um, we've yeah. had a lot of games to play extra and we've had unprecedented injuries um, to, to really key members of the squad. Um, obviously, Solly March has been out since October. Uh, we've had Matoma out uh, and confirmed for the rest of the season now. Uh, Jack Hinshelwood, who, who emerged onto the scene and done really well right back, had to have uh, a foot surgery and and he's he's out for the rest of the season as well. Um, so there's been really key injuries at really key moments. Um, I, I think it had we have had Matoma, Jal Pedro, Solly March in, in the the tie against Roma. Uh, I think it could have been a, a completely different story. Um, and and with our full squad, I believe we can go toe to toe with any club in in the world. Really, I, I think we're. We're a really well-run football club and we've got a really good yeah. squad, even having lost Caicedo and McAllister, who have been you know, massive losses for us. And we we haven't replaced them in the way that we would have wanted to. But I think it's incredibly hard to replace two world-class midfielders in, in one transfer window. We've had Billy Gilmore and Pascal Gross step up to the plate and have been doing a, a decent enough job. With Carlos Belieber, who who came in, having played, I think, only a, around 20 competitive games in France. So he wasn't exactly Premier League ready, but he's been slowly getting there. Um, so I think it's just been a, a season of, of change, a season of um, what's going to happen next. Uh, because I think, as I say, going into next season, we're going to have a strong transfer window and, and hopefully we can compete for Europe again. Um, but we've been there or thereabouts and I, I can't sit here and say that I'm extremely disappointed with, the, with how it's gone. Um, you know, we, we had a, a fantastic European group stage coming top of top of the group um, against Marseille in, in the last minutes of the game. I think you couldn't yeah. write it any better. Um, so, yeah, it's it's been a testing first season in Europe and a testing season in, in in the Premier League. But we could have easily fallen away like other clubs have done when competing in Europe. So um, I think we could probably be quite pleased uh, that we're yeah, not think, fighting relegation. 
Yeah, I think I think from a club that also qualified in seventh several years ago now, I look at your run in the Europa League and I do look at it with you know envious eyes. Obviously, we didn't even get past Olympiacos in the final qualifying stage. Um, somewhat unfortunate with the red card and stuff um, in, in the first leg um, and the penalty. Um, but yeah, I think you can be proud of of that European run. Definitely, uh, it might have ended like I said earlier in a bit of a whimper. Um, but you know, like, like you said, it, it's it, it's been a very very good one. I want to go back to the Deserbi links as well. Obviously, talk of him going Manchester United and stuff like that. I think there's been some other clubs linked in there as well. He's obviously a good manager. He's obviously done very well. You're going to have people looking at your manager. Obviously, you, like you said, you've you've referenced the Graham Potter thing already. It was the same for us last year with company when he was doing well. Um, and I, I suspect if he did well again this year, we'd, we'd be having to having to do the same thing. But obviously, you'll be looking into these links more than us. How how likely is it that Deserbi will, will still be at Brighton next season? Do you think? Uh, I think at the moment it's probably probably hanging on a knife edge. I think it, if he has promising talks with our owners, um, that he he will be backed. Um, and and we will continue to con- uh, improve as a football club. I think mm. he would stay. I think he would see out the project and see mm. where we can get to. Um, but of course, we we know um, as as fans outside of the top six, money talks. Um, and if you've got Liverpool or Bayern Munich or Manchester United sniffing down your neck and, and offering you big bucks, the likelihood is that he he will leave. So I, I think we're quite realistic as Brighton fans, and we and we think. Okay, yeah, we we should probably be preparing for life without the Um, but I think what we're very blessed with at Brighton is that our owners are always four or five steps ahead, um, yeah. and they will will already have the uh, replacement lined up and and ready to be poached. Um, as and when that does happen, as I say, of course we we hope it continues with the I think he's been absolutely fantastic for us. Um. There are question marks whether he is actually ready for an elite job as yet. Our, our um, results ha- haven't really shown that he is of of the elite caliber. I think he's getting there, and I think he's definitely got the potential to be there. Um, but again, that might just be me talking to to put off suitors <laughs> and say he, he's 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 not as good as you think. But you know, I think we're 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 lying to ourselves. I think the Zerbi is the next elite coach after Pep Guardiola, after Jurgen Klopp. I, I think he really has that aura um, and I think he would do a fine job. But of course, yeah, I want him to stay with Brighton. Yeah, of course you do. Um, you must be confident though that, like you've referenced already, your owners are already five steps ahead. Like they replaced Potter with the Zerbe, You know, the, every time you lose a player, I remember that going back to when, when you lost Glenn Murray and Aaron think, oh, Brighton should probably go down now. That's, they'll struggle to replace him. Every single year, whether it be a manager or a player, your owners replacing with somebody better. So you must be confident that, like you said, the owners will port somebody good enough for the job to keep Brighton improving next year. Yeah, and I think that the the big difference with with us, and, and we, we get a lot of comparisons to Leicester's downfall, Southampton's downfall, how they sold players on, etc. Yeah. But I think that, that that is the difference with us, is that we are always four or five steps ahead and, and we do have a, a fan as an owner. So he he isn't thinking about how much money can I get out of this football club. He's thinking, how can I make this football club better in every single way? Um, whilst also, you know, he's a businessman. Of course, he wants to make money, uh, but yeah. he's always got this uh, the club's best interest at heart. Um, so yeah, we're we're always confident. We always trust in Tony Bloom that he's gonna do the right thing by the football club. And, and you know, this football club's been through the ringer. It's had owners that have, have sold its ground. It's had owners that have changed its club colours and badges and all, all sorts. So we know who we've got at the helm and, and we're, we're very thankful for that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think if De Zerbi does leave, if if Matoma leaves, if uh, Lewis, <laughs> Lewis Dunk, Jean-Paul Van Hecker leaves, whoever it is that leaves, um, we will be confident that we can bring in someone. And, and I think people want to come to Brighton as well. I think it's a good club. Um, and I think it's a, a, a progressive club that people sort of get sold on the project and and think, yeah, I, why not go to Brighton? Look at who they've put on the map. Look at what they've achieved. Yeah. Look at what they've produced. Um, so I, I think we're, we, we've done well to, to put ourselves on the map and say, you should come play for Brighton because this is what we can offer you. 
it's a nice city as well. I'm not too far away from London. I think that always helps as well. Um, but yeah, you are right. That the rise of Brighton, the slow rise, admittedly, but the rise of Brighton over the last 20 years. I remember going to the Withdean Stadium like years ago, and I was in the away end. I couldn't actually see what's happening at the other end. That's how bad the ground was. And obviously, you had the athletics track in front of you. Um, so to see where you are now, it's been a been a massive rise. Sticking with the manager debate, you said there you feel like Deserve it is the next elite manager. Obviously, some people saw Potter as that. And mm. then that ended up not being true. He definitely wasn't ready for that Chelsea job anyway when he went to it. I mean, you must have enjoyed seeing him fail there. Uh, but <laughs> the fact that he wasn't ready, I think mm. it ended up showing. Like, what's the difference now b- between Deserve and Potter, in your opinion? I think the difference is we saw the clear difference between what a, a possible elite coach could do for us and, and what Graham Potter done. Um, and whilst I'm not going to sit here and say Graham Potter was terrible for, for us, he wasn't at all. He, he was a great manager and um, took us to heights that we we never thought possible. He finished ninth in his last full season with us. And when he left, we were fourth in the league and we just beaten Leicester 5-2. And I know Leicester went down that year and they weren't a very good side, but we were starting to see what Graham Potter could do for Brighton. I think the frustration with Graham Potter was the fact that he could never really convert games where we were dominating um, sort of 70% possession and XG of over three and, and we would end up drawing nil-nil. Um, I think that was a frustration. And when the Zerbi came in, you saw the difference in how clinical we were and how ruthless we were in front of goal and uh, how many goals we scored in comparison to Graham Potter's last 28 games. I think it was something like Graham Potter, under him we scored 30 goals, under the Zerbi we scored over 60 um, mm. And it was just that clear difference and and the obsession with football. I, I think every manager is obsessed with football, of course, but I, I think the Zerbi is that sort of like Pep Guardiola obsessed with football. He he lives and breathes it 24-7 and he doesn't rest until his team play perfectly, but his team are never going to play perfectly. I don't think any team in world football ever plays perfectly. So he's that coach that chases the never coming perfection and i think that's what sets him apart from from managers we've had in the past and, and other premier league managers is that he never settles for mediocre he always wants yeah, to win enough. yeah I, I agree with that i think he's a great manager um it's interesting to see though on that obsession with perfection to obviously the obsession with the impossible which is something i do mm-hmm. see pep well the all has um so that'll be interesting to see how he does i do think he goes on to have a great career or, or already done well at, at your place obviously um whether or not he's at brighton again next season i'm uh, you'll know more than me i'm not sure i think like you said if man united and liverpool come knocking um I, I think it might be a step too far liverpool at the minute but man united might be a good fit yes they probably are a similar size to liverpool if not bigger depending on where you stand in the debate but they're obviously the knee taking to the next level to Man United now, which will just be the top four, whereas Liverpool obviously want to win things. Um, just before we carry on, I just want to quickly bring your attention to the banner at the bottom of the screen. A big shout out to the YouTube channel members. The names are now rolling across the bottom of the screen. If you do want to join the channel, you can. there's a little button underneath that says join. And if that's not there, because it's not there for everybody, depending on, on what device you, you're watching this on, um, there is a link in the description. You can do that. You will get early release of shows, including this pre-game show and more stuff coming next season as well. So if you do want to join the channel, please feel free. It is a great way to help us and we really do appreciate it. Joe, you mentioned Tony Bloom earlier and you referenced the fact that you've just had this massive profits, which doesn't even include some of your transfers out where you made a lot of money. Um, what sets Tony Bloom and the current sort of like board apart from everyone else in the Premier League? Why are they so good? And, and they're so good to the point where everybody's looking at Brighton. Everybody apart from the top six clubs now look at Brighton and think that's the model we want to copy. Like, what do they do that's so much better to put Brighton in, in such a brilliant position? Uh, they're, they're using a, a really good technology called Star Lizard, which is owned by Tony Bloom. Um, his nickname uh, when he plays poker is The Lizard, um, and, and Star Lizard is his company that, that produces algorithms and, and l- lots of data that, that give sort of transfer targets that people wouldn't be looking at. And, and I think we fish in ponds where people haven't even looked. Um, so, yeah again being being three or four steps ahead of everybody else in the league um and i i think a lot of teams have sort of dabbled in wh- where brighton are looking i think manchester united were in for moises caicedo when we signed in from um ecuador um 
and we we paid four million pounds for him. And I think Manchester United didn't want to take that risk. And I think it's all about risk taking and, and seeing things pay off. And I think having your owner as a gambler is scary because you never know when he's going to say, "All in, here you go. There's all my chips." Yeah. Um, and and then and then lose it all. But I think he takes very calculated risks. And I think nine times out of ten they pay off. There, there have been transfers and, and players that have come into the the squad and never played a Premier League game for us, and we've sold on for for profit. And I think that's always a really good thing to to do. Like send people out on loan, show that they're worth more than we paid them for, and then make money on on them, even though they haven't played a game for Brighton. Um, I think you're seeing that with Abdullah Seema, who who we brought in for sort of seven million pounds, and I think he would go for more than that, having quite a successful season with Rangers in in the SPL. Um, so yeah, I, I think again it, it just sets the spot because we're always four or five steps ahead of everyone else, and and with that algorithm that um, Tony Bloom's company produce, um, I, I don't think many other clubs, if any other clubs, have access to it. Um, and, and I think if they do want access to it, I think it costs something like a million pounds a year for them to sign up for it. So, and I know that's that's not big money in terms of football, um, but I, I don't know if there's been enough of a sample size for for people to take that plunge in it. But we are, and it's paying yeah. off. So. It's interesting because our new owners, I'm not well, I'm not sure they're new anymore. They've been here for a few years now. They actually do use something like that. And I think, again, they looked at Brighton and stuff like that. It's something called AI Scout, if I remember rightly. Obviously, right. it's quite. It's obviously not as good as Star Lizard at the minute. Maybe it needs a bit more work. Alan, if you're watching this, it, it might need a bit more work. But we have we have signed some decent players. This has not done very well this year. Like I remember last year in the Championship, we signed players I'd never heard of. Manuel Benson, Anna Sorore, and obviously Nathan Teller, I'd heard of him. But, you know, he came in and a lot of Southampton fans were saying, oh, he's all right, he's not that good. But we just lit the Championship on fire. Uh, fingers crossed we can do it next season. It might just be a step too far for the board and the players and, and the management as well this year, uh, to be fair. Uh, but looking ahead to the game then, obviously your thoughts ahead of the weekend. Um, any injuries and suspensions uh, in Brighton that we need to know about? Obviously, you mentioned some of the larger ones already. If you just want to go through them again as well, please. Yeah. How long have you got? <laughs> so uh, I think, yeah, Karen Matoma, Solly March, Jack Hinshelwood, Jao Pedro's just come back and CISO's just come back. So they're two very exciting, good attacking yeah. players that we've missed over the last few months. Uh, and CISO got injured in, in August and is only just coming back. So we've we've been without him for a, a very long period this season. Um, any other injuries I can think about? Uh, there are more, but I can't think off the top of my head at the moment. Suspensions, I think we're all okay in, in that department. Um, so hopefully we, we can go into this game with, with a, a good enough squad to to grind out three points. I don't think it's going to be easy. I know your situation. I know your situation throughout the, the whole season. But with Brighton, I, I, we're never confident when we play against the, the, the uh, teams that are, are struggling in the table because I, I think we always struggle against a low block. And if you do a low block, if you sit back and and try and ground out a, a point or something, you will probably get it because we, we really struggle to, to break teams down. And if you can hit us on the counter, um, that's our massive weak spot. Um, so there, there are opportunities for Burnley to, to hurt us, I think. Um, we just have to be ready for, for what they can pose and, and, and take that sort of step forward and, and hopefully break this duck of not being able to compete against the, the teams that are struggling at the bottom end of the table. Yeah, fair enough. I, th I think Burnley and Law Block, I think that's more of the old Burnley. We don't really do that anymore. We, we will come that's at right. you. We will try and play against you. Um, and weirdly enough, we've got better recently, but we were dreadful last time out against Everton because that's what they did. They just did a Law Block right. and said, right, you come and break us down. And we we are that team now, similar to yourselves, that will struggle against that. We don't have the, the, the players uh, to do it. And ultimately, if a team just says to us, you have the ball, we will ultimately just eventually make a mistake and and concede just like we did against Everton. So, mm. yeah, you, you won't be seeing Burnley do a low block. We will come at you. Um, we will try and play football. We will try and have most of the ball uh, and then try and play through you. Um, defensively, how have you been defensively recently? Because I think if we can hurt you, we can hurt you through our attacking players and, and hopefully get in 
and and maybe you know if, if your defense hasn't been great recently we might be able to get some joy so how have you been at the back recently yeah i mean you know we played liverpool we played arsenal of course they're going to score goals against you yeah. of course they're gonna you know arsenal hit us for free liverpool only only scored two but they could have scored more. Our defence was quite resolute against them. Um, we've conceded a lot of goals this season. Um, and I think it's been down to losing Caicedo. I think he was that sort of yeah. sweeper um, that sort of swept off everything that, that the defence couldn't. And um, we just haven't got that. Um, we've conceded four away to Luton. We've conceded three away to, to Fulham. And... There's been games like we conceded six away to Villa, and I know Villa have been good this season, but we've been conceding big numbers. Um, so yeah. I, I think defensively we're we're not all that this season. Lewis Dunk um, hasn't had the the best of seasons. I think he's been okay, but I think he sets himself a high standard, and, and he definitely hasn't hit that. Jan Paul Van Heck has been been fantastic for us, but I think he's he's only as good as his centre back partner, and I think. As, as a defender, you can only do so much by yourself. Um, and we've been doing this stupid goalkeeper rotation as well, which I think has contributed yeah, to, to a, that, yeah. a few a few of the goals that we've conceded. Bart Verbruggen's come in um, and has played the last four or five games. Um, I'm hoping that is the case now going forwards, that Bart is our number one because he's been excellent. Um, and for, for as good as Jason Steele has been for us, he's been an amazing servant for the club. I just don't think he's he's our level anymore, um, and that's no disrespect to him. He, he's he's done amazing for us, as I say, um, and and has stuck by the club. He's been with us four or five years. Um, it has always been four, uh, third or fourth choice, and then he got the call up from the Zerbi last season. Um, so yeah, I, I think there's a lot of uncertainty about our defence, um, and and you could you can you could find ways to hurt us for sure. Yeah, I think both teams to score might be something to look at if you're a betting man on this one. Just looking at some of the stats as well. Obviously, we've got a worse defence than you. Um, I think you've you've conceded 49 goals this season. We've conceded 67, according to what I'm looking at now. So both teams are leaking. Burnley leak more than Brighton, um, but um, yeah, and, and goals scored as well. We, we've 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 only scored 32. You've scored 51. So um, it'll be interesting. We've only scored 16 goals at home, which is uh, pretty poor. Um, but yeah, I do think both teams can can put the ball in the back of the net. Um, just before we we continue, I want to get your uh, predicted sort of like setup, not necessarily a lineup, but how you think Brighton will set up against us, and then then I'll get your predictions. But before we do that, I just want to remind you all that we have exciting news to bring you from Uphold Burnley, sleeve sponsor for the 23-24 season and a supporter of Turfcast podcast. Uphold have now launched a limited edition Burnley Uphold card, giving fans a chance to show their support home and away the card is free and comes with a host of benefits including the ability to spend in any currency anywhere in the world where mastercard is accepted with no foreign transaction fees competitive exchange rates and easy integration with google or apple pay you can get your card today at www.uphold.com slash burnley fc but that's not all when fans use their card for the first time uphold will donate five pounds to burnley in the community supporting the burnley family both on and off the pitch numbers are limited though so again visit www.uphold.com slash burnley fc get your card today terms and conditions apply right joe um how are you expecting brighton to set up like what sort of style are you expecting brighton to play against us are you going to be on the front foot and try and get at us and try and make our terrible defense crumble as it has done so many times this season yeah i i think we've we've got the players that uh, are able to to hurt you for sure like uh, I think Simon Adingra, since he's come back from AFCON, he had one amazing game against Sheffield United, but probably hasn't hit the heights that he would have wanted to. Uh, there's been a lot of question marks as to ha have some of our key players um, been playing through injury because of our injury situation. I think Estupinian has been. Um, in terms of system, I think we were set up with a, a 4-2-3-1. Um, and that's something that we, we have adopted under the Zerbi's sort of two holding yeah. midfielders and uh, and a, a shadow striker or, or a number 10. Um, I think I would like to see Welbeck and Jal Pedro start up front together. Um, so sort of Jal Pedro just behind Welbeck or, or vice versa. Um, and out wide at the moment, as I say, we, we've just had Inciso come back, who's a great option for us, was amazing for us at the tail end of last season for sure. 
um, and, and was excellent at the start of this season before he got injured. Um, Anzu Fatty as well could, could come in um, in the wide areas, but he's been quite disappointing, to be honest. I, yeah. I think he's had a, a big expectation to live up to. I think uh, De Zerbi didn't want to put pressure on him, but um, I think the fans done that naturally because you know you've got a yeah, young you Barcelona yeah. talent coming in he took the number 10 shirt of Lionel Messi when when he left Barcelona and you know what is dubbed to be one of the most promising young players and and just hasn't hit the the ground running at all um so yeah I, I think that that's the 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 system we, we will set up with we we will try and sort of attack you in in the wide areas I think we get quite a lot of success there um, and and I think Pascal Gross will will be um, imperative to our success if if we are to get anything this week. And he's so creative for us. Um, and outside of the top six is is the biggest chance creator over the last sort of three four seasons. I think so. Um, yeah, I think if if he's on his A game, we will create and and hopefully score more than you. But I think he will score against us for sure. Yeah, I agree. I think I said earlier, I think it's both teams to score. And you just referenced Pascal Gross there. Yeah, he's a fantastic player. He's like the order guard of not the top six. I, I love the guy. I think he's brilliant. And it will be interesting to see how we caught with him at the weekend. Probably, hopefully, get somebody like Sander to man-mark him. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what company's plan is. Probably stick James Trafford in midfield um, for the bants uh, <laughs> and see how we get on there. Um, finally, from me, though, some predictions ahead of this weekend. Both teams going into it. With negativity, us probably a lot more than yourselves, but obviously it's all relative. Um, but yeah, I think I think as fans and players now, I think I think that Everton game of the final nail in our coffin. The fat lady is well and truly warming them vocal cords up. Um, as disappointed as I am to say that, but some fans are holding on to the fact that if we beat you and then beat you know the Sheffield United in the next game, then then who knows? Um, we could, but then I think we have to get seven points more than Luton and Forest, and there's six games left. I think. Very minimum, you have to win four games out of six. We've won four all season. Um, so it's unlikely um, that that is going to happen, isn't it? But um, yeah, your predictions, please, mate. Uh, yeah, I, I think as I always do with predictions, I go with my heart and I'll say 3-1 to the Albion. Um, but as I say, there, there there are every every chance that you guys come out and, and play a masterclass at home. I think it's getting towards that tail end of the season where... If a team is fighting relegation, you never know what's going to happen. You never know how much they're going to fight for it. Um, so, yeah. but yeah, I'll, I'll go three one to the Albion. Yeah, fair enough. It always makes me laugh because people do sometimes kind of like cringe at predicting their team to win um, when they're on an opposition channel, but. We've been dreadful this season, mate. So I don't think anyone will begrudge you of that. Um, I'm going to go for 1-1 one, one, and there might be splinters in my arse. Um, but we have been better recently. Forget the Everton game, but a draw against Wolves, a draw at Stamford Bridge, a win against Brentford and a draw at West Ham United. In them four games, we have looked better. But what Everton did is Everton sat back, did the low block, as I've referenced already. And we just couldn't break them down. And then we shot ourselves in the foot, stupidly, um, twice. Um, once with the Murich mistake and obviously once with the Dora O'Shea red card, who will obviously be missing this weekend. But that might be more of a blessing uh, than it is anything else. Um, but yeah, I'm going 1-1. I think we can get at you, we can hurt you, we, we can do that. But I think I think we will concede. Uh, and actually, obviously, we won 1-1 in the early game in the season, wasn't it? But that was James Trafford's best performance. And I think on the balance of play, you probably deserve, did deserve to win that. Uh, but James Trafford was fantastic. Um, well, well, we'll stop it there then, mate. Big thank you for coming on the show. But before I do stop it, do you want to let everyone know where, where they can find you and, and any Brighton and Hove Albion content they want to digest before this weekend? Yeah, of course. So we're Albion Obsessed across all social media and on YouTube. Uh, you referenced the With Dean Stadium. We actually, in December, released a With Dean Stadium documentary. Um, we got given the keys and we went behind closed doors at the With Dean Stadium and, and went into all the old porter, porter cabin change rooms and everything like that. So that documentary is out on our YouTube channel now. So well worth a watch to see, as you say, a part of that rise of, of Brighton and Hove Albion Football Club. Um, but yeah, if you want anything to do with Brian, come over and we'll be happy to have you. Yeah, definitely. I've just made a note of that and I will watch that after my lunch. I'm going to have my lunch now and I'm genuinely going to go and watch that. That sounds incredible. I do like looking at what other channels are doing and how I can 
not copy, take inspiration <laughs> from. Um, but that looks like a, a, something that I will definitely, definitely like. So, yeah, I recommend everybody go over there and check that out. But, Joe, thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. I wish you every luck for the rest of the season. I usually say after Saturday because I'm desperate for Burnley to win to stay up. I mean, obviously, I still want us to win. Um, but again, it's I think it's not really relevant in terms of our season anymore. But who knows? Vizzy has been saying a lot the season starts now. And if we win on Saturday, I'm sure we'll all start getting a little bit giddy again. But thank you, Joe, for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully see you next season. But let's be honest, it'll probably be the season after, if anything, mate. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me. <laughs>